Hey guys, welcome back to my shop, Chop Shop Customs. I'm your host, Masses32210. Today's video is just a very simple uh, video for uh, all you guys and girls out there that want to refill a lead acid battery that really is not too familiar with the process. It's very simple. Uh, the battery I'm talking about is going to be found mostly on your motorcycles and riding lawnmowers. It's a simple little kit. You get it in a little box. You're going to have your main battery with everything set up inside of it except the electrolyte, I believe. Acid is what I call it. Um, very simple. Uh, you're only going to need minimum type safety equipment, nothing major. So let me get you set up on the tripod here and I'll show you what we've got going on today. All right, guys. This is going to be the battery we're going to be working with. It's the Everstar ES 12AA. Um, this is what my particular motorcycle called for. Nothing more. Like I said, we're going to just do a quick unboxing and go uh, before we even get started with that. What I'm going to do is go over just some basic safety equipment. Nice, thick, heavy-duty gloves. These are the 7mm uh, thickness gloves. They're from Harbor Freight. Pretty good deal. Um, I highly recommend them. These are really thick. You really want to wear something on your hands when you're going to be opening up the acid. Also, uh, safety goggles or uh, safety glasses of some sort. Highly recommend it. If you don't wear glasses, now even though I wear glasses, I am still going to go ahead and put mine on because it's just going to make better sense. Um, let's see, getting into the battery itself. What we're going to be getting into is, let me show you, open this up and show you what we got going on in here. All right, before I put my gloves on, we'll go ahead and unbox this. If you notice, you're going to go ahead and unbox it. You're going to see some cardboard here and, and what appears going to be your battery, which it's going to be. This is my particular battery. So we'll go ahead and put this up here on the bench. We'll go ahead and reach in here, pull this box out. Now, before I open this, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on just in case of uh, any kind of spills. And also what you're going to find is your basic uh, owner's manual. Um, it'll have all your safety, everything in there, including your instructions. Uh, give me one second, guys. Let me go ahead and, because um, these gloves are pretty thick, I'll go ahead and put on my gloves. I'm going to go ahead and open up all these red caps. We'll go ahead and stick them right here on the bench, nice and neat, so we're not going to lose anything. And we'll go ahead and get ready to get started. Well, all right, guys. Went ahead, got the safety gear on, so we're going to uh, just go ahead and be do a little, use a little precaution. What I've done is went ahead and removed the acid right out of the box. Nothing major. Inside there you will notice a little orange tube. You got some clear tubing and some nuts and bolts. The nuts and bolts, of course, are going to be will hold your electrical connection on this. So what I'll do right now is we're just going to go, uh, just going right after that little orange tube. Actually, what I can do to make this easier because wearing gloves, these seven mil gloves does kind of pose. A uh, little risk, I don't want to end up tearing nothing up, but what I wanted to do is retrieve the simple little tube. What I've also went ahead and did off camera is I would put the gloves on. Choose a simple little flathead to remove this little uh, little plug. If you notice, it's just got a little square, uh, not square, I'm sorry. little uh, line cut into it, makes the screwdriver easy to pop it, uh, twist it, break it loose. If you notice, just a simple little gasket that seals everything. As per instructions, right here on the side, you noticed I removed the little uh, cap. Something that I had noticed on my battery that the original owner who just installed it before I received the bike did not remove. So you want to remove that. Your clear line that you are that is included in this kit that I managed to drop. What it does is it hooks right here. After you get this installed, you hook it up to your vent and you safely route it away from the motorcycle. And the reason is is that. Uh, if for some reason it boils up something, it has it gives somewhere for that acid to escape. This is not a sealed battery, not like your AGMs uh, or lipos. I did consider that for my motorcycle, but at $160, that definitely was not a feasible. Uh, it was not feasible at this point. So we got this battery. I think today for $44.95 at Walmart. $12 core and a $2 hazard fee, I believe, or something. Anyway, they can make an extra dollar off of us because they know we're not going to return these stupid cores. Actually, thinking about it, yes, I am. Um, I will return the one that's dead on my bike, retrieve $12 back. All right, pair of scissors. What you're going to see is you're going to have this little nipple on here. Nothing major. What it is, you're just going to cut about half of it off. 
let's see if I'm in frame be very do this very carefully don't squeeze on the bottle you don't want to release any of that all right got a perfect little hole cut put the scissors away and retrieve retrieve my little orange tube all I'm going to do is slide that on slide it on until it seats the whole way now comes the fun part I would say average person would have a nice clean workbench I could do this a little easier and I'm going to yes I'm not going to make apologies my workbench just happens to be dirty and obviously I work better that way alright now twist it up my way if you notice real quick before I flip it around to make it easier for me to fill up this lower line <clears throat> is simply marked lower level the top one of course would be marked upper level even has it on the front of the case plus and minus so it's easy to identify and as well on top of your battery negative positive pretty well simple what I'm going to do is just twist this sucker around insert that we're trying not to spill acid and as soon as I put it in there I did spill some acid this is why I say precaution use uh, use all the safety gear it is was and I do recommend wearing some kind of uh, mask or respirator but because I'm shooting video I'm going to just take my time and do this slowly and what I have here I'm not sure if you can clearly see it. you might be able to see it on camera as I gently squeeze on this bottle you'll see this level rise uh, I believe you can yep you can actually see that and that's all you want to do squeeze it kinda hard but once you get up here you want to just be very careful go to the upper level uh, we're gonna have acid spill yep and my tube come loose there we go trying to be a little bit more cautious uh, thank God I got some cat litter in underneath the bench I can soak that up and use some uh, baking soda something to go ahead and absorb and neutralize what did spill so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, just continue to fill this up nothing major like I said just every one of them get them up to the upper level line so that will be the first task. I'll go ahead and get this done all the way across, and I'll be right back with y'all guys. Alright, this literally took me seconds. It did not take that long. I just didn't want to bore y'all. It literally took less than a minute to fill up all the cells. What I've done is flip this around, and you can clearly see right here in the video that this cell number, it would be number three coming in. This one just needs a little bit more to actually, actually let me double check. That could be okay. I'm just going you know, to top it off just a hair. Um, you will have just a little bit of acid left. I've never actually encountered a battery that took the entire bottle. Yeah, uh, let me see if you can kind of see. You got a little bit left. This does need to be uh, disposed of properly. Don't smoke around it. Of course, that's going to be a corrosive symbol. This is why, if you notice my gloves, I've already gotten some on there. So why I say it's very important that we take some precautions uh, in doing this, and that's just how easy it is to do one of these. Uh, nothing major. So now that we've gotten this on, we have this on, or I'm sorry, we have the cap off the vent. Everything is filled up. Nothing to worry about now. Just simply take, uh, screw these back in place loosely just literally leave them loose we're not going to tighten nothing down right now just go through uh, what is this all six of them I believe and of course because the top of the battery has acid obviously it's getting on my gloves so what I'm going to do is just grab my old little shop rag that these are disposables cloth ones I'll pick up uh, usually one big pack a year kind of lasts me out and I recommend that for anybody's shop uh, old shirts sometimes you can go down to your local thrift store they have big bundle deals on clothes like literally a uh, big giant bag for a buck just clearance sale highly recommend it if you don't want to invest money in shop rags because they can get a little pricey depending on what you're buying now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get the extra of this off try to at least and since this is just a uh, just a crappy old shop rag that I've, I've used them until they get too greasy or something then I go ahead and dispose of them and as well this rag now then needs to be disposed of properly one thing uh, when you're doing this <clears throat> it's not hard to notice it's an acidy egg type smell this is why I recommend wearing a respirator uh, the fumes can be definitely harmful do this uh, as well vented of an area as you can 
just happens to be I'm right here next to the shop door with fresh air actually flowing in so we're gonna call that ventilated alright just going through double checking I want these loose but I don't want them falling off alrighty now refer to nothing more major I mean this is literally the main part right here don't let me just close this rag always refer back to the instructions that you acquired with your battery <clears throat> Let me double check mine. I believe now that is filled. It, uh, let's see, it's filled now. We're going to let the battery stand for at least a minimum of 30 to 60 minutes. We're going to let it sit here. Uh, there's a little chart that tells you tells you to keep the, the caps on very loose. And that's because as everything is going to start activating inside your battery, it's going to start kind of gassing off. So with, now that uh, that's done on there, always like I said refer back to your instructions um, we're gonna refer always refer back to your instructions for everything let me look over here if you notice there's a little chart I gotta find my battery on here and it kinda tells me everything what I need to do and how to charge it properly let me check this because everybody's battery is gonna be different if you notice they're gonna list here like eight to ten different style batteries it tells you the capacity a ten hour rate uh, the capacity at a 10 hour rate, how many amps you're going to have, the charging time, how many amps and uh, various information. Very important to double check and since I know which model I got, let me go ahead and double check it against this and I'll be right back with y'all guys. Well alright guys, this is the last and final step and what we're going to do here to today. Now that because the instructions clearly indicate that once it's filled, you, I fill everything to your upper mark, so I got that done. All my caps are on still loosely, and the vent is, uh, it's, uh, I don't know what you call it, uncapped, I'm sorry. So we got the vent uncapped, everything's still loose. The charger, I have it just sitting up. No, this is not the actual proper charging configuration, because as per the instructions said, we're going to leave this for a minimum of 30 minutes to let everything equalize, kind of saturate in there, and let the acid start doing its thing. Um, what I have here is a Schumacher. <clears throat> it's a simple older Schumacher. I've had this probably for about 15 years. I love this one. It's, I've got a 6 volt. It's 6 volt 6 amps, 12 volt 2 amps, and 12 volt 6 amps. What I have is um, the lowest setting I have on this one. I wish I had a 1 amp so I could do an ultra trickle charge. So what I did is I've set it for 12 volts 2 amps. I have everything corresponding. The negative clamp, the positive clamp, everything is set up right in front of its appropriate terminals. So we're going to go ahead and let this sit for 30 minutes. And as, I was, as I've said already, you kind of want to refer back to your guide. So what I did was I've looked at the ES 12th AA is what I've got. Tells me I have uh, 12 hours of uh, at 10 amps, I guess that's reserve, or amp. Or I'm sorry, 12 uh, amp hours. Something like that. I'm sorry, I'm not 100% sure on that one, but... Again, it states how long on the different size batteries, what's the minimum, uh, standing time before and after adding acid. So it's 30 minutes. See if you can see that without my light from the camera kind of hurting this. Then again, you have this, uh, this uh, charging hours. You got 1 amp, amp and a half, and 2 amps. Since my charger, the lowest I have is 2 amps, it's, it calls for 3 to 6 hours at 2 amps charging. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to go the full 6 and I don't want to go the full 3. I'll meet in a happy medium around four to four and a half hours of giving this charge. Once uh, I've done that, I'll uh, turn it off, was what I recommend. Let it sit 30 minutes, go ahead and install it on your vehicle, and test it out. And I also recommend taking a voltmeter just to double check that you're going to be at the at least 12 volts, if not 13.5, 14 volts, give or take, because no battery is exactly dead on 12, uh, especially after a charge. So that's my video for today. I hope you all have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, put them down below. Uh, also, if you kind of look down below, somewhere down here below this video is going to be the thumbs up button. Uh, go ahead and click it. It doesn't cost nothing. It's free to hit it. Uh, also, down there and below this video is going to be the subscribe button. Go ahead and push subscribe, guys. Let me know. Feel the love out there in YouTube. And as always, like I said, give me that thumbs up. If you enjoy this, also check out the rest of some of my other videos uh, of all the various things I've built or put together. Guys, it's always been a pleasure to do videos for y'all in the community of YouTube. 
Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching Masses 3220, and you've been here at Chop Shop Customs.